Hey folks, just wanted to jump in here with a quick tip around processing Hubble or James Webb images in PixInsight. Uh, so, you know, in a great turn of events, uh, the James Webb team released a lot of the raw images to the public, you know, pretty much immediately when they, with the first images were released. Super awesome. Uh, you can get them through, there's some bulk download scripts that you can get from the, from the website, or you can go to the mass database and get them. But we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Um, but one thing that's challenging about processing these images is assigning the filters to colors other than red, green, and blue in PixInsight at least. So in PixInsight, we've got LRGB combination, we've got pixel math, we've got channel combination, etc. But in general, you're trying to assign things to red, green, and blue or loom. Uh, and that kind of mimics what we do in amateur astrophotography. We're shooting in LRGB or you know HSO, whatever, and we're combining based on three channels. But in a lot of images that the, the Hubble team and, and you know folks that do this processing release, they'll release these compass images. And, and what I mean by that is every time they release an image, they'll present you with you know the filters that were used for whatever color. And you get things like yellow, you cyan, magenta, violet, orange, uh, in order to get some of these vibrant you know images that, that we've come to like. So that's challenging in, in PixInsight. So most people use Photoshop. Uh, or, you know, some kind of fancy pixel math expressions that I was experimenting, but really had a tough time with. But one of the original folks I've seen, seen do this is Miss Judy Smith, who, you know, basically assigns each filter as a layer and then colorizes each one, kind of similar to what we do in solar. So that becomes challenging. I found like the experimentation is a little bit weird. Uh, it was easier than uh, trying to use pixel math. Uh, when I first downloaded this data, I was you know, trying to figure out how I can combine some of the filters and just get red and change some of the hues and then put them back together. It became really a struggle to come up with what the percentages need to look like. So I had done some searching around because I'm like, somebody has had to release some sort of tool. I came across a post from 2018 where a gentleman had made a script to combine images with you know different colors in an overall palette, not just red, green, and blue. Um, but some of the scripts, especially from, from that far back, are a little bit unreliable or they don't work really well or they're a little bit clunky. So I kind of shuffled it off to the side and went back to Photoshop and kind of did my. However, um, I did the next day go back to it and I'm glad that I did uh, because it offered kind of a really cool solution. So that's just what I want to share with you. And I'm going to try and be brief as possible. I don't know. I know we don't like to sit through a lot of extraneous information in these videos. Anyway, to get the data. You can either go to the mast archive, go to advanced search, and some of these parameters here you can fill in. There, you know, there's tutorials on this where you're the mission you're looking for James Webb or Hubble. For the project, you can either or the um, uh, proposal ID, you can enter the proposal that that's on the website. You know, you can pick from certain cameras or certain filters, filters, whatever, and you can go download that data directly. So what you're looking for are also there, there was these scripts that they released. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't like using those because each one of these, like even the calibrated folders, like 200 gigs. Uh, when I did the first one, I had to do some regular expressions to pull out the, just the data I needed. That's a little bit clunky. <laughs> um, so I would suggest just using the mass database to get, anyway, what you're looking for is the near infrared camera in general, um, the near cam, uh, directory or the those images with the different filter names and they'll have an end uh, kind of a, an end value of uh, i2d so it'll say near cam clear the filter name and then i so what you get out of it is a fits file that has a bunch of calibration stuff in it then it has the fully calibrated and mosaic image to pull from so i pulled one over here let pix insight do its thing it's going to pull up about six images so as a result of these images, like I said, you'll get a lot of the calibration stuff in here. This one's black. You've got some, some of the mosaic panels, etc. We can just go straight through these and you have finally. So the one thing that you'll notice is these aren't aligned. Uh, they've been calibrated, the mosaic's been put together, but they're not star aligned with each other. So you're gonna have to do that step. The way I do it is I take these, I save them as XISF, which is the, the native format. I will star align them, prop them so they're all the same size, and then I have them prepped to do the, the channel combination. So let me get rid of this stuff and I'll show you the script. So I'll put the link in the description below, but if you install it just like any other script, 
you'll download the zip file, extract it into your scripts folder, and then install it as a feature script. And you'll have a little folder here, a menu item says DC script. And the script is called combine images. And what you get out of that window here, where you can, you have to have the images open up uh, on your uh, desktop there, in your workspace. You can add these images, oops, different channels, different uh, selections. You can do is you can assign them to pretty much any color that you can think of and you can even tweak some of these values you can change the mix you can do whatever you want so this made it really easy in order to experiment um, so what i'll do is i'll take this compass image and we will recreate the original compass just as a starting point so 090 was assigned to blue Blue. So 187 was cyan. Yeah, 200 is green. Three thirty-five orange. Red. Four seventy was right. So you press preview it'll do an auto stretch and you can do length or auto stretch there's some instructions here um, but what you'll get out of it is a preview image you can take a look at this preview in this one it comes out a little bit yellow uh, and i actually did play with this one a little bit it, it seemed kind of cool i wanted to do something a little bit different um just be because of the way the mix works in here you can actually play with this and get a little bit closer to to what the original image looked like and i actually figured out that just by looking at some of the data, if I change this one to yellow, reversing the colors here, make this one cyan, red, you got to scroll through. Sometimes the uh, the typing does. Then green. I'll do my preview again, and we're going to get a little bit closer to that original image as, as it makes as the pixel math to put this together. And really what it's doing is automating the pixel math you need to make these other colors. So you click finalize, you'll get your image out, and this is unstretched. It's just auto stretched right now, um, but it gives you kind of an easy way to combine all these different channels in order to get what you're looking for. Done. Finish exit and we have our final image that's really similar now so we'll we'll flip this around in fast rotation to the way looking for and boom there we go so that's really close to the to the image and yet i did that experimentation in about five minutes it's heckin' easier than using photoshop and it allowed me to stay inside pix insight and use all the tools that i want to do my my post process Anyway, for those of, the, of you that are playing with some of the James Webb data, this is might be a, a good tool in order to uh, kind of help you do that experimentation a little bit easier. Uh, as I said, I'll put the link to the script, the script in the description below. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Great. All right. Clear skies, guys. Have a good one.